Hello, so welcome to this video for Comp 3218 Games Design at the University of Southampton. Uh, my name is Dave Millard, I'm one of the lecturers on the course, and I'm here with... I'm Tom Blount, I'm another one of the lecturers on the course. So in this video, we're going to be looking at some of the work that students have submitted for their first coursework. Uh, Tom, do you want to say a little bit about what we've asked the students to do? Absolutely. So for this coursework, we asked our students to create a small game prototype that had a clear core dynamic supported by a number of mechanics and a way for uh, a way of tutorializing those mechanics to the player. Brilliant. Okay, well, let's have a look at our first game. Okay, and this is Powerline. Yeah, this. Uh, so I did see this um, in the expo, so I'm looking forward to having a, a proper look at it. Uh, a and D and space to move. And space to move. E to power the... Oh, okay, I, I assumed that I would be the big giant robot, not this small green... Battery. Battery, yeah. yeah. Press yeah. E to power the robot. Okay. Well, okay, I can, I can push so, the robot, but if I press E, aha, now I'm in the robot and I have right. wavy blue electricity coming out at me, which I feel like under ah. normal circumstances would be bad, but this case is good. Ah, recharge via power line, there we go. I know, if you look in the top right hand corner, you've got a blue bar that's going down. Okay, and if I stand under this, it recharges. Okay, it charges. Nice. Press E to eject from the robot. Uh, the battery can fit into smaller areas, crates are useful to progress. Okay, so my okay. my power is ticking down. It still tick yeah, it still ticks down when I'm in the still battery. Still ticking down. Okay, so I've got to jump over there. To push that out. Hop back in the robot. Can the robot jump? Ah, uh, but now I can't push this there. Can't get there. And oh, you can't. oh, you oh you can power up can, there. I can okay. just about power up here. That's worth knowing. Let's push this a little bit further this way. Yeah, and then back in the robot. Oh, right. and jump over jump the top. Over. And you should have enough time. So when I did this bit in the expo, I took me ages to get past that because I I didn't realise you could get powered up in that right hand corner. And as a result, I just kept running out of power all the time. When it says the robot has enhanced jumping ability, what do you think that means? I don't know, can it jump higher or further than the battery? Okay, I, I, I wondered if it meant double jump, but no, I think I can just... Yeah, I, can, I guess I can just jump a bit further than yep. the battery. Hmm. Okay, so... So I, I get the power... The, what's the, what do you think the, the line is between the different powers of the poles? I think so you've got the... Because I was kind of expecting you to be able to connect to the line between them. You can't, right? You can only connect to the pole itself. How do I... I can't get out the other side of the robot. I think if the robot's facing the other way, you might jump out the other side. No, you... always that side. Try again. Oops, that's bad. Yeah, I also... That problem. Face the other way. Oh, there we there go. go. So, oh, I think if it I... jumps out the front. No, if it didn't. It was if I was moving that way, it would jump out the front. Ah, okay. Uh, so the battery can push a... buttons to release trapdoors. Okay. Donk. Okay. So that drops down. Now. And then I'm going to push this this way. Yeah. Um, can I? I can power up. <laughs> so I'm just going to have to do this, aren't I? Yeah. I don't know if this is intended nice. or not. So yeah, it's an interesting idea of like you know a puzzle game with a timer. Yeah. So I'm I'm having to sit here and think about you know how to solve all of this while panicking that I'm not going to have enough time to do yeah. it, which is yeah. and and mostly giving you the chance to um to think about it, right? So you you, you can power up and then you can go off and set the timer off and try to do the various bits. So, so the timer is not on your thinking time; it's on your execution time. Well, and that's that's mostly. Kind of nice. So, like this one, yeah, I can definitely reach it from there. The other one where I had yeah. to sort of like jump up and. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now you're in trouble. Oh, now I've now I've got to go. All... It is a nice idea. I it, it does feel a bit fiddly when you're playing it. Um, I back. think the principle is a good one. Yeah, so there's, presumably, presumably. I occasionally can't jump, unfortunately, which is a bit of a... Ah, okay. So, like, 
like now I'm. There we go. I'm trying to get back in the robot. Power up. I, I, hopefully the robot should be able to jump on there, now. I can't. Back across. Okay. So it feels like there's not quite enough space to get this puzzle working the way they want. Yeah. It's it's. Oh, no. I, I think you're right. I think that the gap on the right hand side is too small, and you keep having to have this problem where you're jumping. Or, or you know, maybe I'm just really bad. Can I? There we go. Right, there we are. So I don't need to actually push it that way. I just need to. And you can jump across there. So I don't know what this thing below us is, but I'm assuming it's bad because there's a path to avoid it. Uh, yeah, we've got some spikes. Some buttons can be activated by crates. Oh, so you've okay. got spikes there. So we got a button. Huh. Okay. Yeah, so now, now you've got this. Hang on, yeah, I was about to jump out of the battery there. That would be... Yeah, could probably leave. Could you? Oh, no, you can't leave the robot there because you wouldn't be able to get down, would you? No. And I think you, I've... Are you now stuck now because of the yeah. crates? And... Yeah. It feels. I think actually that description of yours is, is, is pretty good. So the problem is there's not enough space in which to solve the problems. So you're always messing around with, you know, is there enough room to get the crate in? And the robot backs, you've got enough room to get the battery out. If they just space the level out, That's then so we're going to talk about the, about the core dynamic in a minute, and it's yeah. spatial reasoning. But there isn't enough space to do the reasoning. Like, I, yeah. it's not that I'm struggling yeah. to solve the puzzle. It's like, okay, I need to put that there, get that button, hit that button with that crate. Yeah. But the thing that's challenging me the most is just sort of fiddling about with it, unfortunately. Think careful about having, the placement. Having the size. Think the carefully about the placement of crate. Okay, well, after, after talking a big game there, I'm like, okay, well, what does that mean? So, so if you press the button, the crates will drop through, right? Right. So does that mean you have to put the crate this, under... I want this crate to be over there. But the yeah, problem is one of the other crates drops in the crate. But see, this is the thing. I'm sitting there trying to think about how I'm going to do this. And yeah. Then... So, in, so in that case, you you're, you're right. You you didn't have the you you would you the timer was running during your thinking time, right? Which is a, which I think is a problem. Oh, I don't have to redo this bit. That's already. Oh, okay. That's that's kind of nice, at least. You do need to. Just, well, hang on a minute, because that crate hasn't fallen down. There's supposed to be a button down here. Ooh. That looks bad. I think I think we might have found a little bit of a bug in there. Yeah. Let's just so yeah, that drops down. And then yeah. yeah. So I needed that other box to be under there. Well unless you just stood under there, because the boxes fall on your head. So I think if you'd stood under the box on the left, you might have uh, might have enabled it to drop on top of the box on the right. Oh maybe. But but I don't think that's how you're supposed to solve the puzzle. Yeah, well I tell you what, let's okay. uh yeah, should we get start going through the criteria while you are, are while making I try your way through? Track, yeah. So the first the first thing we're looking at is presentation. Um, so this is information design, graphics, and audio. Um, so I can't actually hear any audio from the game. Oh, is there any... yeah. I, so I may not be uh, sharing that with you. Um, okay. Yes, there is uh, some sort of like there's some nice little power noises when you're charging up. There's like an alarm that goes off when uh, it's getting low. Ah, okay. There's Good. some nice little ambient music in the background that seems to disappear after a little while, but it's it's back at the minute. But, nice. but it's there. Um, the graphics, I think, are, are pretty consistent. They're, um, they, they work well, the animations are working. Yeah, we've got this little particle effect that I think goes... Hang on, let me just... Yeah, it goes red when the robot's not got the battery in it. So that's a, that's a nice bit of information design, bit of feedback for you. Um, and the power line, not only is it a nice effect, but it's very clear when the robot is charging because you get that charge line that, that comes in. So actually, I think the information design, the graphics, the audio are, are doing pretty well. Yeah. So um, what other information, though? Let's think about that for a minute. You've got the, the so power up in the top right-hand corner. Yeah. It's maybe a little bit... Uh... A little bit far away. Maybe that's just because of the resolution of my screen or whatever. But there is at least the nice alarm, so I know when it's getting low. I was speaking of which. Yeah. I need to just. Okay. Yeah. Um. 
But yeah, so I think they've done a nice job. So, I mean, good would be all key information shown, consistent and effective graphics, and complementary audio effects and music. And I think it probably fits all of those categories. Yeah. Um, to be excellent, all information will be shown clearly, consistent, effective, appealing graphics, and complementary and appealing effects and music. Um, and I kind of wonder whether uh, whether some of the ways they've shown the information actually does lift them up into that zone for, for say, the information design category. Because it's all done... Uh, and you, you're right about the bar being a little bit away from the vision, but other than that, the, the information about... You know, you've got feedback on the robot, you've got that really nice electrical effect showing whether you're charging or not. Right, that's working quite quite well. This button seems very temperamental. There we go. Yeah. Um, so but, I think yeah, I agree. So, so I think that's that's probably up there. Um, and uh, it sounds to me like the possibly the same with the audio as well, actually. Yeah. There's a, a nice selection of things. Um, and the graphics have got some nice effects too, but, I, but perhaps not but not quite as good as those other elements. Ah, there you go. Oh, there we go, that was the end. Uh, the battery and the robots, thank you for recharging them. Very good. So, okay, so um, the next thing we're looking for is meaningful play. Um, so this is essentially uh, whether or not there's any bugs, the range of mechanics and whether they work together and the controls um, what does it feel like to control uh, it's not it's not bad um, the jump is occasionally a little bit uh, I don't know how to best to describe it like uh, I Sticky. occasionally yeah I will press it and it won't sort of jump immediately when I'm expecting it to um, yeah. which I know I it, they noticed they seem to be quite generous with their um, collision boxes for things like platforms yeah which is very sensible Although, ironically, it's actually causing a bit of a problem there because you can't get down the other side of that crate. But yeah. Um, so, I mean, good would be a, a reasonable set of smooth, usable controls. And I think we're definitely um, we're definitely there. So, e excellent would be intuitive, and I if, perhaps it's a little bit too clumsy to be classed as intuitive. Yeah. But I think it's definitely up at the, the good level. Possibly even halfway between the two, although yeah, I think I think you're right. Just because of the like, on the one hand, making the collision boxes slightly bigger than some of the platforms, like mm -hmm. that, for example, like really sensible thing to do in a platformer. However, in a platformer where you're trying to sort of like move the boxes around and things like that, it's almost works yeah. against it. So yeah, I, th I think it's solidly in a good, but maybe not quite reaching towards excellent for that. And, and the mechanics. Um, so what have we got here? So you, you can jump. Uh, yep. You've got the charging and the, and the recharging. You've got the battery coming in and out. You've got buttons. You've got crates. Uh, you've got pushing stuff around. So there's quite a lot going on, right? Yeah, absolutely. There's a good set of mechanics. Um, so good would be a set of complementary mechanics. And I think that's there. Excellent would be a wide set of complementary mechanics. Um... Do you think Does it we're... count? Yeah, is it is it up at a wide set? It, it feels like it's it's reaching towards it, reaching towards it. So yeah, maybe maybe between the two. I like that's it. I think if it was just you know a, a robot platforming around, it would be it would be good. I think because they've got the 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 nice idea of like the battery and sort of having to sort of move around and yeah. and over things a bit differently. I think. Yeah. Oh, actually, you've persuaded me there. You're right. I mean, that that whole idea of the, the the battery coming in and out and the charging, I think, probably lifts it up. Um, so Ooh, I, I just noticed an interesting thing. I don't know whether this yep. is a bug or not. If the robot's charging, my battery thing doesn't go down, even though I'm not in the robot. So I can just leave the robot parked. Yes. There. Yeah. Yeah. I presume that's deliberate. I don't. Know. It feels like but, it shouldn't be, right? Because it's the. I think part, part of the issue is I'm not entirely sure about their puzzle design. Oh, I also can't jump anymore, which is a bit of a problem. Uh, well, that kind of takes us onto bugs, right? Because um, we found a few minor bugs, I think. Um, so good would be game is reasonably complex uh, and there are infrequent minor bugs. And I think we're probably there, aren't we? There's a lot. There's quite a bit going on. There's one or two little bugs. Oh, that, generally speaking, is it's playable. Yeah, I agree. This is, I, 
I'm sorry, I'm just interested about this. I I can't jump if I'm not touching another collider from the looks of it. Like, so I can jump over ah, here, but not here. Yeah. Um, I think they might. I think they might have mentioned something like that to me in the expo. Uh, I think it might be a problem they're aware of. So um, yeah, platforming in Unity is occasionally a little bit uh, tricky. Yeah. So uh, now we're on to kind of filling the brief, which was essentially to kind of um, have a good level design and um, uh, a tutorial. So in terms of the level design, uh, what we're looking for is something where there are clear goals, risks and rewards and something where there's um, some pacing. So there's certainly pacing. The puzzles definitely get more challenging as we as we go on. Yeah, and you've got some sort of good basic stuff to start you, haven't you? So it's sort of... Uh, um, I mean, we asked them to do a playable prototype, so I don't think we'd have expected much more than they've de de delivered. But even in what they've got got here, it starts off simple and it lifts itself up. So I think that's kind of a, a, a clear example of tension rises over time. Um, that would be satisfactory. Um, good would be that it has a kind of coherent pattern. So, in other words, you might have a sort of mini climaxes, I suppose. I don't know if you quite have that. Um, I, I don't know. Like each of the puzzles is its own like self-contained piece. Yeah, that's true. Oh, wow. I suppose you get through, and then there's the bit that connects them. And I guess there's the inherent, uh, what's the word, like tension or pacing of the, um, of the what's the word, the timer ticking down as well. Yeah. So within each little level. Thing. Yeah. Okay. All right. You've you convinced me. So that would be up at the the good level. Clearly, um, I'm what generous about, today. Uh, what about the goals and risk rewards? Goals are very very clear. There isn't. Well, there's. Yeah, there's not really a huge element of risk versus reward. There's some. No. Like in so much as there's not. Uh, a lot of decisions to make in how we solve the puzzle, like you know whether we sort of risk it to, yeah. to solve it in a better, so, or clever, or more skillful way. So, so the problem, the, the problem is that there's no measure of how well you've solved the puzzle, right? So there's no sense of a timer or things you have to collect as part of the puzzle, which and, gives you different grades of solving the puzzle, which is why a lot of games have those elements, right? So it is probably worth saying, like, you know, they may have wanted to not overcomplicate their core dynamic by adding collection or timers, because that can sometimes muddy the waters. It's true. Uh, oh yeah, there's your problem with the bug. Um, but still, I, I think that as a result of that, their risks and rewards. But well, what I was oh, going to say was so there are there are ways of having that risk and reward without adding, for example, collectibles and things like that. You could have uh, you know two two paths in the platformer. One is a yeah. lot harder, but you know gets you to the end quicker. Or I guess it's still some element of the idea of reward. Yeah. The, pro the problem is there's no, without any reward, there's nothing to motivate you choosing a different path. So you're, you're, you're right that you can have different risks, but I think you have to have some kind of reward in there. Well, the reward could be like stuff within the, you know, like uh, extra checkpoints or power lines or things like that. Or Well, well it could be as simple as having multiple endpoints, right? Yeah. So you just have, just have different endpoints. So, um, but, but I think those are missing. So I think, I think while I agree with you that the, the pacing is, um, is pretty good, um, I think the goals, risks, and rewards is perhaps a little bit more limited. Yeah, so, I think that's right. um, A pass would be a, a limited set of goals, risks, and rewards. Um, a satisfactory would be a coherent set, and good would be clear and coherent. I think the goal is clear, right? Yeah, um, definitely. But the risks and rewards are very limited, so that probably means that for that they're sort of sitting in the middle and they're satisfactory. Uh, so, yeah, sure. okay. That seems so. Um, okay, so what about the tutorial bit? So, uh, we've got uh, a lot of the tutorial being done through these sort of um, text text prompts that are that are nicely yeah. integrated into the level. It's not just a big um, text dump, they are spaced out quite well. And it builds up, right? So you start yeah. off with the basic instructions, um, you know, jumping on a crate, then they teach you about moving the robot, um, and finally they introduce the button. So I think that it's also spaced out quite nicely. Yeah, so some of these, I mean, for, like, crates are useful to progress is maybe a little bit overboard with the text and things. <laughs> yeah. But 
but particularly like things like um, you know sort of highlighting that the battery can get into small spaces is probably probably yeah. useful. Yeah. So um, good would be a gradual explanation of gameplay and controls um, fully aligned with play. Um, and I think they've just about got that, haven't they? They've kind of they introduced the things gradually as you need them. Um, and you you actually do have to manipulate them in the way they're suggesting in order to progress from that point. So you're kind of yeah you're you're demonstrating your mastery of those elements as they as they get introduced. Yeah, and as they yeah as they add each new mechanic, so the the crates, the buttons, the yeah they introduce them into the new. Uh, interesting. And so, there's also things like these little um, question mark signs and things like that, just to sort of yes. like highlight that this is the thing that the battery can get through. So the, the next one up, the excellent category, would be to have that communicated through level design. Um, and although you have to use them in the level, I'm less sure that they are communicated through level design. I think they're, they're relying on that text. Yeah, so for right. example, the, um, the first... I'll go back to it here. So the first bit where the battery can go into the smaller space yep. is... Like, there has to be a sign that specifically says it. Yeah. Whereas, and in fact, not 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 only that is it's behind you. It's behind right? you. Yeah, I was going to say. So yeah. contrast that to the bit that we just saw, where it's there is a, a sort of platform at waist height for the robot, but we can see that there is a route under it. And if yes. it just said press E to eject from the robot, and then we ejected, then it would be very obvious just through the level design itself. We yeah. don't need all of this. So, but I still think I still think that tutorial is is delivering pretty effectively. Um, so, you know, I think it's at the good the good level. Yeah, I agree. Um, so, you mentioned core dynamic earlier, and we've kind of got to that bit now. Um, so, um, I'm going to have a little look at their game notes. But unlike you, I'm presuming they've gone for a, a spatial reasoning. Yes, the core dynamic for our game is spatial reasoning. Uh, because of the main objective and the primary game loop being puzzle solving via moving crates and pressing buttons. Uh, decisions are made considering the different capabilities of the robot and battery, uh, which allow the battery to fit into smaller spaces and the robot to have enhanced jumping ability. Right, so they, that's what they've clearly gone for. Um, and I think it works, right? So they've, they've, as you said, they've not, they've not added in anything else to muddy the waters. Um, well, so the, yeah, the thing that comes dangerously close to it is this idea of, you know, I've got a limited time to spatially reason through all of the things, and... Sort of the survival element, you mean? Well, uh, not, yeah, it's sort of, yeah, I guess. Like, like I think, like yeah. you say, it works, because mostly they have a point where, you know, I can sit and charge up while I That's think right. about how to solve the puzzle. And yeah. then it's a case of how fast can I manipulate the things to get through this space. If it yeah. was, there are a couple of points where it's a case of I have to think while the clock is ticking and then still solve the puzzle afterwards, which I think takes away from it a little bit. But for the most part, yeah. it yeah. it actually works quite well. But I mean, I think we're we're, we're nitpicking, aren't we? So yeah. so so the a good here would be a clear core dynamic that is supported by the primary mechanics, right? Um, and I think and I think that's right. Excellent would be a clear core dynamic that is supported by an integrated set of mechanics. Um, and it, it's it's starting to get there, but it begins to get confused by by the, that that element that you spoke about, right? Um, so it, I don't think it quite achieves excellent for its core dynamic. I think it's kind of. Uh, Arguably, it's sort of leaning towards it. Um, they certainly, it's certainly very clearly a spatial reasoning dynamic, and all of the mechanics do lean in that direction. It just feels that that, that one mechanic can sometimes detract. Yeah. Um, so, lastly, we ask all the students to write some uh, how they responded to feedback, and we kind of look at how that, that works. Um, so, on feedback, they said, uh, in the tutorial, they were told to explain more clearly why the player needs to do certain things as a cheese, and try to rethink the tutorial to better explain the game. Um, so, one of the things they did is uh, they set the player to spawn at the beginning as the battery, so that it was more obvious that the battery could be inserted into and ejected from the robot. Is um, that what happens? <clears throat> so, do you not start as the... I thought you did if, start if, as the battery. Uh, that's right. If I go all the way back to main... 
It's ah. press E to power the robot. I I'm definitely remember you. I definitely remember you starting and saying, "Oh, I expect it to be the robot." And I'm yeah. Battery. Right. Okay. So, so okay. So that's. I guess a something's not being set properly when we restart, but it is definitely. Yeah. Because I was about to say, like, I remember talking to them about that, and if you start as playing as start playing as the robot and then have to, you know, eject your power core or whatever, that's a yeah. bit counterintuitive. Why would you ever want to do that? But if you start yeah. as the power core and then leap and into then power a robot, up power up into the robot it makes more sense yeah and, and i think that works really well actually that change yeah um, and the second thing they mentioned was um <clears throat> wanted to include ways that an experienced player could have an advantage over a less experienced player um so i think this is starting to get towards our risk rewards thing we were talking about yeah an experienced player might be able to achieve those rewards that an inexperienced player doesn't have um but what they've said is that a more experienced player will be able to more effectively and consistently solve each level. So they'll be more efficient with movement, um, they'll make the jumps more consistently, um, and will fail less and have to restart less. So I, I'm not sure that they've interpreted that feedback quite right. right? I mean, I, I think that there clearly is a difference between, between experienced and inexperienced players. But the point is, their it's... game doesn't reward experienced players for being able to do that. Yeah. Right? Um, um, they've actually put in a third one as well, which is to try and include audio cues for the player to signify certain events and actions. And they've added lots of audio clips to signify different things and make it clearer. And and we've said that that's, you know, you've mentioned a couple of times actually that some of those cues are really useful. Yeah. So I think that's a little bit of a mix. I think they've kind of, they've, they've actually. Um, the first one's quite subtle, but seems to work quite well. The last one is, is a bit more straightforward, but they've done it. And then the one in the middle, they've kind of... They haven't really actioned it in a way that's made much of a difference. Um, yeah, they've, they've, they've basically said that, well, a good player will be good at the game. And it's like, okay, but how does your yeah. how does your level design support that? Like you yeah. say, how, how are you rewarding the, the player for that? Yeah. So good would be feedback has been addressed and the changes have been successful. Satisfactory would be feedback was addressed and the changes have been somewhat successful. Um, so I think it's down to whether or not we feel that the, the other two items of feedback allow them to hit the good level. Um, I think they they probably do. Yeah, I, they, I think they, so. they've they've you know they've uh, they, they have made changes and the changes do work. Um, yeah, it's certainly not quite up at the excellent because it doesn't necessarily have that um, that extra little bit. But yeah, I, th I think we so, can say it's good. Yeah, so excellent would be feedback has been interpreted, and I think that's what they failed to do with the second one. They didn't understand exactly what what the feedback was trying to get to. Um, so yeah, so I think this is this is you know in conclusion, I think this is rather a nice little puzzle game, um, and. If, if it feels like it could have done with a little bit more space and perhaps um, a little bit more care to make sure that the puzzles were uh, set up so that the, you had separate thinking and execution time. But generally speaking, it, it all works well and there's a, a nice set of mechanics and the core dynamic comes across very clearly. So, yeah, I think it's good. Excellent. Let's uh, move on to the next one. Let's do that. Alex Woods presents Golfon. Here we go. Okay, Ale Alex Woods Golfon. Uh, Playtesters, press L in game to skip through levels. It's wow, that's that's very thoughtful of them. It's almost like they think that I won't be able to beat the golfing game, which is I, sus I suspect which this might quite be possible. possible. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Uh, let's right. hit play. Okay, let's play. Okay, already. Ah, okay. Quite a lot of stuff on the screen at once. There is, isn't there? Uh, a lot going on. So, so you've got course one, score zero, stroke zero, par two, pow, and then ER. <laughs> um, increase the oh, power yes. by moving the cursor away from the ball. Okay, there we go. Uh, tutorial, uh, okay. left click to shoot, and then quit tutorial is T, and quit is escape. Okay, so. Wow. Okay, there is a lot going on. But, you know. I, like, I feel. Fairness. Like, on, <laughs> yeah, on the one hand. Uh, I don't know. Is all of it needed? Could we strip out like the the score and the course and the things like that, and add them later, or is uh, do we need them from the start? Maybe. Anyway, so uh, left click to shoot. So 
Yeah. So the other thing, like, there's two sort of really important bits of tutorial here, but they're sort of split and in different fonts and in different places, which is a little bit... I think that's... I think the problem is, is that there's... It's not that there's too much information. It's, as you said, the information's in different places. So the the power, for example, is Ah. is shown simultaneously in the bottom left-hand corner and also on that line away from the ball, right? So there is a good reason for that, which I think we'll probably see in a minute. In fact, I can I just knock it gently forwards. Yeah. Um, that little red line will sometimes disappear into the terrain a bit, unfortunately. So, <laughs> which is why we have the extra bar there. Right. So, but but that's why but that's why that's confusing. And then the tutorial is, is exactly right. You've got um, mm. you've got two places where the tutorial's coming in. Oh, is this free camera mode? Free cam mode, which you know. Not necess. Well, I was going to say not necessary, but actually, yeah, probably will be quite necessary for like some of that extra yeah, spatial reasoning. Yeah. So, so I think that's their problem. I don't think they've got too much on on screen. Um, I think, and actually, the same with the course, the score, the strokes, and the par. Right? It's like you know you, that that feels like it should have been summarised in in a single place somewhere. Um, but uh, okay, so obviously you've got. So is your is your control essentially direction and strength? That's what. You yeah, mean. basically. Um, just sorry. So first off, I, I I know I've gone into this kind of like nitpicking already, but I do have to say, you know, this is a really nice looking game, right? It's it is yeah, lots I, of stuff going. I, on. I I sort of immediately jumped in on the in on the UI because I'd already seen this in the expo and I was already you know, like yeah. it looks really good. Oh, I should say that does. say that for this. It does, and and actually I have to say it's um. It, not only is the the the, the well, it's difficult to separate them. The design is also really good. So that kind of very clean white, um, sort of um, Mediterranean style uh, kind of brick. stonework yeah. with with the or dark grass and everything. That that like works really well. Um, yeah. So yeah. So speaking uh, of yeah. the design, um, so I've already seen this level, but have have you? And what do you, what do you what do you what do you think I should do now? So I, I haven't seen the level. I saw I saw it playing in the expo, but I didn't play it. So um, so I don't know. I mean, it looks to me. I'm guessing you knock it into that that archway. Yeah. So this was one of the things that they were sort of uh, asking about in the lab sessions about sort of yeah. yeah. How do we how do we make it obvious that this is effectively a teleporter? So yeah. I think one of the, a couple of things they came up with is you know they actually directly connected these with these pipes so it looks like you yes. go in one and come out the other. Yeah. They added this window so that you can see you know kind of like in Portal like I went in there and yeah. now I can see through. I can it, which like out. like you say talking about the design like yeah. really nice that, techniques that does work really well actually and and worked for me so that's how I assumed they were connected. Oops. Yeah. Oops. Um, in terms of the controls, so I'm still trying to figure out. So you've got you've got direction and a power, but when you click, does it just? So on a lot of these games, when once you've selected what you want to do, you then have to achieve it, right? So for example, there'll be a rising power bar, and you have to stop it between two lines or something. But uh, here, does it just execute automatically what you decide to do? Yeah, there's not um, that kind of like I guess sort of little mini game in it. It's just sort of yeah. And to be honest. I'm kind of grateful for that because even like having <laughs> full control over. Oh, yeah. Down you go. Um, are there sound effects in this one? There are. Uh, are they not coming through either? So there, are, there no. is some lovely music. Okay. There is, um, you know, a satisfying little every time we hit the ball and every time yep. we hit something else. Okay. This time for sure. <laughs> I appreciate there's like a big dip around uh, this one. Yes, just to, to to get you in there. So one one thing that's made. Oh no 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 no. One thing that's a little odd is I can't. I can't, uh, the direction I hit in is sort of informed by this camera, so I can't sort of like have this angle and then hit it off to the right this way. Yeah. So I've yeah. got to line it up this way. Oh, so yeah. one of the one of the Plus other seven, things is better than that. High scores yeah. are good in golf, right? That's how that works. <laughs> so the other one other little thing that, that's quite nice is the um, the texture that they've used for the grass. Um, they've got those. They've got the checkerboard effect, which makes it a lot easier to see the topology. Yes, actually, I hadn't and, thought about and, that until and you mentioned really, it. And really, and really subtly done. So that, that's that's quite good, actually. I, 
I'm I'm no idea if that was deliberate or whether they sort of accidentally stumbled across it Boom. and thought it was a good idea, but it, it's very effective. Um, yeah, like it's definitely a deliberate choice because you know the grass texture outside doesn't have that same kind of checkerboard. Yeah, ah, good point. Yeah. So in that case, well done. You've, you've chosen well. Uh, I think that works works well. So in, in, in fact, should we should we start going through because we've already yes, mentioned like. a couple of the things. So so the first up was presentation. So this is the information design, the graphics, and the audio. So I think we've both said that the graphics and the audio are ah. really nice. Um, um, that's very golf effective. Clap as well. it's a little <laughs> golf clap when you uh, get in. So, so for me, the excellent for graphics uh, would be consistent, effective, and appealing, and I kind of feel that it it, it, it achieves that. Um, and audio, um, uh, you know, good would be complementary audio and music, and excellent would be complementary uh, and appealing effects and music. So, do you feel it's, the audio is up at the excellent level as well? Uh, <laughs> sorry, I got distracted. Um, yeah, I think so. I mean, there's like a limited amount that you can do with it, but actually, no, I take it back. It's yes, it definitely is. I was going to say there's a limited number of you know sound effects and things you can do with a ball bouncing off of things, but no, they also have the like the announcer voice. They have the little golf clap stuff that doesn't necessarily yeah it, stuff that isn't needed as information feedback, but is just like yep. excellent polish. So yeah, I think it. I think it really is. So information design, I think, is maybe not quite so good because of the reasons we said, but probably still good. So good would be all key information is shown, um, and I, I think it is. I mean, it's all on screen. You've got the direction comes out as that sort of stretchy direction thing. You've got your, the course, the score, number of strokes, the pie you're aiming for. Um, so I, th I think that works well. Um, I've just realised something else, which I, yep. I mean technically might be part of information design. The trees disappear when the ball is close to them. I think. Those, ah. Let me let me go back over here and just see if that's if I'm imagining things or not. Oh, you think they disappear so they don't get in the camera view? I thought so. I maybe just totally imagined that. I mean, they, they, I mean, things like that checkerboard effect do work really well actually it's, it's a very subtle out there. yeah it is isn't it maybe, maybe it's, just, it's not intentional maybe it's just <laughs> just the way it is um, so I, I think for me the, the information design is is definitely good oh, um, excellent would be all key information is shown clearly um, I mean actually once you're out of the tutorial and you're into the you know it's not quite so bad I I do think it's a shame that they that they've not found a way to kind of get that power thing all integrated into one one element, but I mean it works fine. Um, okay, I'm not sure how I'm supposed to do. Oh, can I go across this way? The tree's definitely not disappearing there. Yeah, I think I imagined that. Oh, that's a window. Oh, do I have so, to miss? There we go. Um, yeah, sorry, where, where were we at? Information design still? Or? Yeah, so we're basically, it's a question of, um, so I'm struggling a little bit because excellent will be all key information is shown clearly. Um, and I think all the information is shown, but there's a little bit of confusion between things like the, 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 the two places where the power is shown, for example. Uh, um, I made up for a little by well, the checkerboard effect, which I really like, and I think is very effective. I so in terms of like the power being shown in two places, I don't think that's wrong. I think it it's maybe an issue that all of it is shown immediately all at once, like on yeah. the very first screen you see, and it's a bit overwhelming. But it, like you say, I think once you're past the sort of tutorial stage of things, it's it relatively sensible. Sense. You know, we've got strokes, we've got yeah. power, we've got like the course and the overall score maybe isn't like super necessary there, but. Maybe maybe we should put it halfway between the two, um, which is still which is still very good. Um, so what about meaningful play? So this is the mechanics, the controls, and whether or not there are any bugs. Um, what what are the controls like? What's it? Is it uh, actually yeah, pretty good. Um, there's, I'm surprised there isn't like an instant reset control or something like R to. 
like I, if I'm you know stuck rolling down a slope or something, I can just press R to yeah. reset to where I was or restart, restart, or just yeah restart the whole level. Whoa. <laughs> there we go. Oh, oh, there we go. Yeah. Um, well, so a good would be a reasonable set of smooth controls, um, and I think it counts for that, doesn't it? Alex, yeah, Moore, definitely. Uh, would you would would you say that they were intuitive and smooth? Yes, I think broadly I would. There's, let me just tweak the sound a little bit. There's the. I, I guess I was. Uh, Intuitively, I kind of want to be pointing towards the thing that I'm trying to hit, having to sort of rotate the camera to a particular way. Yeah. Because then, you know, if hypothetically I wanted to shoot this way, I could get into problems with that. But there's the zoom, yeah. there's the free mode and things like that. The 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 free the free look camera is the controls for that are a little bit. Yeah. Uh, well, 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 maybe sort of for controls sort of halfway between the two. Um. Mechanics? Uh, is there a you know good would be a set of complementary mechanics and excellent is a wide set of mechanics. So, so what have we got? You've you've got the we've got basic the... basic golfing controls. Ah. So we've got power. We've got aiming. We've got getting it into got... the hole at the end. Then they added things you've got like these yeah you've got like... these interactions like the topology and the teleporters and the... and the teleporters and you've also got some of the and, the and like the free look as well. Yeah, yeah. So I I, I was. One of the things I think I said to them in one of the live sessions was, you know, I was a little bit concerned. Okay. That there's there's only so many mechanics you can put into a golf game, but they have have put enough. Yeah. So it's a it's a bit of a shame that ones like this don't don't show up more often. Yeah. But actually, but actually, I think they've yeah they've done a decent job. I think there's a there's a fair few things in there. Yeah. Um, so I think there's a, a wide set, right? So you could definitely imagine a golf game which was a full golf game which had fewer fewer things going on in it. Um, so oh. yeah, I, I'm happy for for that to be up at the kind of the excellent level. Um, excellent. Any bugs? Not that I've spotted so far. So I think the game is reasonably complex, and there are no obvious bugs. So again, that's at the excellent level. So they've done a kind of good job, I think. Right. Let's talk about the level design. Um, so uh, wow. what we're looking for here is the goals, risks, and rewards, and the pacing, and whether or not it kind of progresses over time. So it definitely looks like these courses are getting more complex as you're progressing. Yep. Um, are they um, are they getting just bigger, or are they actually getting more difficult to achieve? Or how De do you describe? I them? would say they're definitely uh, yeah getting more difficult to achieve. So, for example, here we we've got the like it's some of them are like certainly the earlier ones are like a sort of linear kind of a okay it just has to go here here they're sort yeah. of slightly more not necessarily a choice about how you get around it, but you have to think about am I going to try and bounce it off of all of these to get it through, or am I going to sort of play it safe? So I guess there's an yeah. element of risk versus reward happening in there as oh. well, even just within the yeah. sort of linear levels. However, this is the one I was hoping to get to, just to sort of leap to um, risk versus reward. Uh, yeah. Here, here's, <laughs> here's a demonstration of your risk versus reward, right? If you think you're a good yes. enough player to make this shot, You've got yeah. a much easier time, but if you are, you know, less yeah. confident at just blasting a golf ball, you can take the slower, safer, easier route, but it will take you more shots to do it. Yeah, and here the the par is a or your your yeah your your score versus par is a natural is a natural um, uh, reward, right? Um, if you land in there, how do you get? Uh, oh, do you it's get reset. automatically? Yeah, which I guess so, again another another mechanic to add to the pile. So actually, they've done pretty well here then. So we've got good would be tension rises over time in a coherent pattern, and I think that's true. Um, do you feel it's particularly well balanced? Because that would be the excellent level. Yeah, I think this this is the only level that I'm not thrilled with because it's very difficult to see what where I should be going. Right. I think that's just because there's a lot of elements on the screen. So this, so I don't think I can skim it off of this thing in the middle. Yeah, it's a bit too high, isn't it? Yeah. So I think... So the way I did it before was just sort of blasting it this way. But you presumably bounce it off the cube. Oh, maybe. Is that what I'm supposed to do? If I... I think that's... Uh... Yeah, that now, so... Hang on. You have to just wait, to wait for your moment. Uh, okay. 
Oh, and you're back in again. <laughs> so last time I yes, just sort of went I, this way, which. But yeah. I think I think that's the idea. Um, okay, so we can we can sort of say maybe for um, uh, for pacing. So is this one? Do you feel this is a bit out of sequence? This level or no? I don't think so. I think it's. I think it's more just you know the the level design of this one isn't as clear as it is in some of the others, but in terms of pacing, there's it's good. It's oh, yeah, well, we've got more fact, rotating fact, it's elements. Excellent. It's drawing together yeah. all of the things that uh, we've seen so far. And the goals, risks, and rewards you said so uh, excellent would be a clear, coherent, and well balanced set of goals, risks, and rewards. Good would be clear and coherent set of goals, risks, and rewards. So I suppose it's whether or not you feel that the they are particularly well balanced and used particularly well. But they're definitely here, so I think it easily achieves the good. Um, I think it might does even it, be tending towards X. It's like, does it, it happen? Are there multiple places where it occurs where you've got those choices? Well, this is this is the thing, right? You've got this sort of in like just in making a golf game, there's an inherent <laughs> risk versus reward of if you yes, think you're a good is, enough yeah. player, you can try and take a trickier shot. I'm glad that they emphasised it with at least that one level that had the direct choice, because that makes it a lot easier yeah. for me to look at the mark scheme and say, ah, yes, they have definitely done this deliberately. It, w- it would be nice if they'd done that a bit more, I think. Yeah, so there's, um, like, even this... Oh, I can open the uh, camera, can't I? Uh, in this level, yeah, like, there is... You could go this way or this way, yeah. but this one doesn't feel as much of a clear risk versus reward. In fact, they seem very similar yeah. as paths. Yeah. Okay. So I th- I think for that one it's probably at the the good level, but they've definitely got it there. It's definitely working. Oh, I, I think it might um, even be halfway between the two. To be honest. Well, okay. Because yeah. they do know. have one. They they do have at least one example of, of where it's um. Like you say, it would definitely be nice well if balanced. there was more of it. But so the tutorial at the beginning. Um, so again, I like that was like well, uh, that was, was, the... was everything on the screen at once, wasn't there? Yeah. So probably... There's a limit because. Like as I was saying, sort of like there's a limited number of mechanics or controls for a golf game. There's also a limited number of things to tutorialize. Yeah, I think yeah, it does fall down a bit because we've got tutorial left click to shoot. But th- this is actually the really Im- important bit of the tutorial here, which is yeah. y- this is how you this is how you shoot. Yes, and you know again we'll sort of see some of that just by you know naturally moving the mouse and seeing this change. Mm. But there's they a do. lot of stuff on the screen at once, and I, it's this weird disconnect between these two really important bits. I think. Yeah. That's... Once you're past this, though, do they introduce the elements gradually? So here, the, so this, so this is you've got a basic, you've got a basic uh, bounce off the wall. So here's to, the thing: they don't there. tell you how to move the camera in the start. They only tell you how to left click and shoot. I, I was just doing this because I knew how to. But if I, okay. if I just go forwards, then it says hold right click and drag to look around. Right, and okay. also aim, which it doesn't, I guess, yeah. specify, but there's that. So, and then, but, but also you've got kind of, there's no, there's no puzzle elements in there, right? So they, yeah. later on they're going to introduce the, um, they're going to, well, here, here we've got the topology coming in, but later on they're going to introduce the teleporters, they're going to introduce the, the windmills and the moving parts and so on. So that's it, in terms of like the pacing of the level design. Yeah. And like, so for example, the um, little, uh, what's the word? Pipe teleporter thing. Yeah. They, they don't tutorialize at all. They let the level design do it, and they've designed the level in a really nice way yeah, yeah. to let that yeah. happen. That, I think that their, their tutorial has actually done a lot better through their level design than those initial yeah. text prompts. Yes, and well, well, I think in a sense that's the that's the main tutorial, isn't it? It's teaching you to, to to about those different obstacles. It's just that first bit getting you over the basics of how do you. How do you strike the ball and move around? Um, so look, good would be a gradual explanation of gameplay and controls fully aligned with play. Uh, excellent would be gradual explanation of gameplay and controls fully aligned with play and sometimes communicated through level design. And I think that that is what they've done actually. Um, mm, I with, with the caveat that at the beginning you've got this kind of slightly. I would say it's maybe between a good and excellent for that reason, like the. Yeah. I think I think that's fair enough. I think they're kind of. Um, yeah, they're 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 almost there, aren't they? Like it's um, in terms of sort of the controls and the way one plays. Yeah. In terms of uh, like yeah, the pacing of the levels is done really well. The introduction of each mechanic within a level is done really well, but yeah. the way that the player approaches it. Yeah. Is yeah, it's the controls. It's the explanation yeah. of the controls. It's got kind of dumped on you a little bit, but uh, um, okay. Uh, um, so we're onto the core dynamic. 
Um, so they say their game's core dynamic is spatial reasoning. Which Good. Is, yep, that which seems is, to be the case. Right. Um, uh, and um, uh, yeah, so they've added uh, things like teleporting pipes, ramps, jumps, walls, and rotating objects. Um, well, and they've uh, to complement this, they've added in the free camera to help, play help players who have not seen a, the course before to scope it out. Um, we think the free camera encourages players who use it to play more tactically. All right. So I think uh, yes, it, they clearly understand what their what their core dynamic is. Uh, good would be a clear core dynamic that is supported by the primary mechanics. I think that is true. Yep, easily there. Um, excellent would be an integrated set of mechanics. So. Uh, yes, I think kind of. Yeah, so the the camera is an interesting choice. Like they mentioned, they added that specifically so that you could look at it. So yeah. I, I'm not a huge fan of the way it controls, to be honest. Like the zoom in and out is, yeah, a bit. Yeah. However, the reasoning behind adding it is really good. It's like, a, okay, they're going to have to reason how to get from one end of the course to the other. And if they can't see the whole course from where they are, being able yeah. to go and have a look at it and go, oh, actually, I want to go this path, or oh, I'm going to try and sort of bounce it off here, yeah. and then go back and execute that. Actually, what? So I haven't, I haven't been using it like that because mm. I'm not a fan of the controls of it. But the Very reasoning good. behind adding it is really solid. Right. So, so I think, I mean, to to be honest, the the thing about a golf game is you you kind of you almost get the clear core dynamic for free, right? Yeah. Because the, the, the that that's why that's why golf and and of course mini golf um, is popular because it has a because it has a, a, a very clear core dynamic that's supported by the mechanics of play. But um, I think they've they they they've captured those really nicely. So again, I think that's probably up at the excellent level. I think it's done a done a good job. Um, okay. So all that leaves us with is their feedback. So, uh, yep, again, this is the bit where they kind of uh, report back what feedback they received from us and what they did about it. So they said uh, they got feedback to improve the game's physics feel, to improve the pacing, to properly introduce the teleporter mechanic, to have some kind of victory music, and to have a free fly camera to scout out the different holes. Um, so they did okay. the phys physics stuff through playtesting. Um, uh, they've tried to get the pacing right by increasing the difficulty as the game progresses, where the first hit is relatively easy so players get a small break between holes. Um, and they said originally the teleporter appeared in the fifth level, but never it was never shown to the player that you could use teleporters before then, so it's hard to figure out that it even did anything. To address this, we added a teleporter in level three you must go through to progress, and a pipe between the entrance and exits to make it more obvious. And and we talked about this. That that does work well, right? That's really clear. Yeah, I think it, I think it's um, still a shame that it, they haven't done more with it, because it's only in those yeah. two levels, and you always have to go through. It's not like you know, if you're a yeah, good player, yeah. you can find one and use it as a sneaky shortcut. It's just yes, that that's yeah. just the way you have to go. But other than that, uh, yeah, okay. certainly in terms of introducing it, I think the way they designed that um, like initial uh, yeah. encounter was really good. The... They've uh, they have some more. They said they asked one of their friends, the esteemed golfer Alex Woods, to record some announcer-like lines. So that's very good. I like that, um, and we we appreciated their, their, their those little fun additions. Um, what were you aiming at? And uh, yeah, obviously the free flying camera. So so they so I think they clearly have listened to the feedback, and they clearly have implemented something that's worked. So good would be feedback has been addressed and the changes have been successful. Oh I think God. it's definitely there. So have they interpreted that feedback in a way, um, or have they just kind of directly done it? Um, I mean, I think oh they've been God. quite. I mean, certainly putting in that teleporter early is a way of kind of a, a, is an imaginative solution to the problem. And actually, being told that they need to spice up the audio, and actually putting in the the the, the kind of the uh, yeah, putting in Alex basically, I think that's quite a fun and imaginative way of doing things as well. Yeah. So I think I think they might be up and excellent for the feedback too. Yeah. So I I, I didn't realise, or I guess didn't remember that the uh, the camera thing was a just ah. you should do this. Oh, yeah. Um. 
but yeah, I, I, I still stand by that. Like the fact that they implemented it and they described their reasonings for implementing it at least yeah. are good. But yeah, that's one that. So so despite our very first reaction being, oh my god, look at all the stuff on the screen. Actually, I think they've deli delivered a really nice game here. Um, yeah, agreed. That, that uh, does a nice job of introducing all the elements and um, yeah, is is really effective. So yeah, well done. Great. Let's let's move on to the next one. Let's go. All right, and this is Happy Robot Incorporated. All right, I like it. Nice, nice chirpy name. It's good. Yeah, nice, uh, nice little title screen as well. Yep, that's uh, looking nice. Aha. Uh -huh. Happy Robot wow. Incorporated. We care. We, we care. <laughs> okay, so we've got A and D. The flickering, the flickering C. I like it. Okay, so that's um, nice. They so the yes. So they the, immediately yeah. integrated tutorial. It's stuck above our character's head, so it moves as we move, and it fades out as we use it. That's and nice. It dismisses. Yeah, that's good. Oh, I like the little bit of dynamic. Zero, zero, one. Bit of dynamic camera movement as well. Yep, showing off the scenery. In, like actually, and that's some nice. really nice shaders on the. I'm going to call them the lava lamps up there. Yes. Uh, more, more more screws equals happy robot. Okay, so we've got one okay. screw. And space, space to jump. jump. Yeah, space All right, this is good. And we can and this. Okay. Hold space, space for a Space long. jump. That's nice. Danger gravity generator. <laughs> so more, so <laughs> more lava equals dead robot. So I I played <laughs> very cute. Uh, I think yeah, there you go, dead. So okay, I, I, I played a... I played this in the expo and I said it to them there, but I think that little gravity effect is really lovely. Yeah, agreed. It works really well. Um, I also, I have to be honest, find it incredibly hard to play upside down. I'm not a massive platformer anyway, but it just completely screwed with my brain. So I'm interested to see how well you cope. Not. So I played this in the expo as well. I don't think I did tremendously better. <laughs> right. Um, so presumably you can jump on there and then jump down. Ah, there we go. Oh, there you go into them. But I've already got the. So you want so to, have to go back to that. Screw at the bottom, probably. Yeah, but I, I want to, to know. Uh, <laughs> see, I want to know what that little pad thing is down the bottom there. That's a, a That's thing. A thing that uh, eats you into the sky, I believe. I guess that's what, I'm, that's what my guess would be based on its placement. Well, based on what happened jump. last time. I, oh, that's right. Yeah, I've got to jump. <laughs> I was like, oh, I made it onto the thing. I'm done now. Okay, so yeah, we go in here, and then that's the only way we'd be able to get out. But now ah, we swap okay. back up here. Yeah, that's cute. Okay, good. So a lovely looking game. It really is. They've definitely spent it. Oh, no, I actually do need to still be on this side. And then that thing flings me over there. Oh, we don't need to be on that side. There's a thing over there. Okay, and across, and and then I guess. I need so to... what the, the cog I guess is the end of the level. So what do you think the three um, cogs? Oh, uh, okay. so three cogs. A button and a cog. Uh, got and, a cog. and a cog. Ah, the cogs. So the cogs is not the end of the level. The cogs is super jump. So if I press shift, Ooh. again, I really like that effect. So contextual tutorial and. As I press the button down, it shows. Yeah. yeah. And there's also that little three cogs motif in the background to show yeah. that that's why now I can do this. Yeah. Can you still do it? Is it like a permanent ability once you've got it, or is it a one shot only? I, I don't know, because that is the end of the game. <laughs> ah, okay. Okay. So just the one level. All right. Well, I mean, let's go through it, because I mean, there's a lot, lot to like here, I think. So, um, first of all, we're looking at presentation. So, information design, graphics, and audio. Um, so what's the audio like? Uh, that's a good question. I think there is some, but it is very quiet. So there's definitely footstep noises. I think there's some in the background. I don't even know if it's going to pick up on the video, to be honest, because it's very quiet and I don't want to boost it too much. Sure. So, I mean, uh, are there any, just, any, any music? Yeah, I think so. It's just very, very, very faint. Um, okay. Uh... Yeah, and there's something like a little sort of destruction, death animation thing. So, uh, good would be complementary audio effects and music, which probably sounds like where we are. Yeah. Um, 
graphics on the other hand i mean I, I think the graphics are really nice they've got some really lovely effects going on yeah absolutely so, so again we're not marking necessarily the quality of the individual assets themselves but more how they've sort of drawn them together and using them like together so, and I so think... an, yeah so an example of that would be that that gravity line where you've got the arrows the animated arrows you know the fact that it moves slightly so it's dynamic and it draws attention to it um the use of the vibrant colors for things like the lava and the movement on the lava again compared to the kind of the static nature of much of the rest of the level so for the, those reasons i think i would say that the graphics are up at the excellent excellent level um they count as kind of appealing um information design so um a lot of information designs actually linked up with the tutorial which is which is fine, but I, I, so I think we're going to end up discussing it more than once. But so you've got like a core piece of information, which is the number of nuts that you've got along the way, right? That's in the top right hand corner. Yeah. Although, so I guess they are just score, right? They're not four. Or yes. Else, and I lose one if I die, which is interesting because uh, I'm jumping ahead again. But there's kind of that risk reward there as well. Yeah. Of I. I spent ages uh, the last time I played this dying over and over and over again to get one of those <laughs> balls. And I've just realized yeah. that that actually was a bad idea. I should have I should have yeah, just absolutely. not done that. Yeah. So um, um, so yeah, so information design though we we can see what's at the top. I guess uh, like the, the, like the gravity you, wave and the arrows also counts, doesn't it? And like the lava as well, right? Like and you say, vibrant well. stands out. Yeah. I, I, even though it's like a, you know a relatively sort of simple sort of shader design, I recognised it as yep. lava. Moments yep. before I was unceremoniously catapulted into yep. it. Yeah. Um, so I think kind of um, uh, good would be all key information is shown. Excellent would be all key information is shown clearly. Um, there's there's a little bit of a limited set of things that they're actually showing off here, um, but that's because of the nature of the the, the the game. But I think so. So maybe sort of halfway between the two. Yeah, I think so. But, um, but they've done a nice job. Um, next up is is play and whether they've got meaningful play. So that's the kind of mechanics, controls, and sort of any bugs and things. What what are the controls like? Mostly. Oh, that's interesting. How have I done that? <laughs> I seem to have the super jump without collecting all of those things. Uh, um, okay. Yeah, overall, uh, it controls pretty well. It control the robot moves a lot faster than I. Oh, I guess they respawn in case I use the super use jump. The super jump and then cut. Oh, okay, that would be why then. So actually, that's yeah. a nice bit of um, design yeah. as well because it means that if I mess up in the tutorial, I don't get stuck. Yeah. Uh, I've already gotten distracted from what I was saying. Um, uh -huh. Yes, control controls are very nice. It's maybe a little bit sort of speedier than I expect, and the jump is... Uh, I don't know. I think it's just, yeah, the movement speed is more than I expect, but in terms of like the tightness of the controls, it feels very good. Yeah. So good would be a, um, a reasonable set of smooth and usable controls, and excellent would be if they became intuitive. Um, so... Uh, intuitive and smooth, I suppose. So it sounds to me like they're they're at the good level, perhaps. But maybe not quite at the the excellent. I I think maybe maybe between the two. It's something I think we're about to talk about in a minute. In that that there's a rare well, there's a limited set of controls, right? In such that you know, yeah. standard platform, I can move and jump. Um, so they're as they're very intuitive because there's a limited amount of them but they're certainly smooth yeah. to use so i think i think probably i would put them between a good and excellent okay and then um then we're looking at the mechanics so what mechanics have we got we've got uh we've got jumping we've got the gravity reversal effect yeah we've so got the collection we've got the lava we've got the spring platforms um, we've got the cogs, and we've got the super jump. Yeah, so in terms of um, the controls buttons. that the player has, they're relatively, yeah. there's relatively few mechanics, but in terms of like all of the things put together, like you say, the, the gravity, the, the collecting yeah. stuff for a super jump, the collecting like the bonus points and things yeah. like that, actually there's like a, a, a nice set of things there. There's a lot, a lot going on, isn't there? So um, 
I think we've got a kind of a wide set of complementary mechanics, right? Um, the which would be excellent. The the only thing I would say is that, um, given the amount of stuff that they've got going on, they perhaps could have done a bit more in terms of combining them yes. in interesting ways in the levels. Um, it, 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 I tell you what, it feels like it feels like they've they've got the they've got the mechanics for three or four levels and yes. they've delivered one level so this is definitely right. something that i was going to mention uh probably i guess in the level design or pacing side is yeah. that i like i know we say you know only a small game prototype it is still quite short like they've done a lot within this one space and it feels like they could have actually extended yeah. some of the levels i almost yeah. wonder you know given how nice it looks like how long they spent on like some of these graphical effects <laughs> and whether yeah, maybe yeah. they could have sort of spent some of that time just adding a second level that sort of pulls I, together I think, some of the mechanics they've introduced. I think I think it's worth saying as well. It's it's not. Uh, it, w w what it feels to me is it feels like they've done all of the work to have a second or third level. Yeah, absolutely. It's not. But the... then just not bothered putting one together. Well, it, it, I, because I mean, not because bothered. because all oh, ran out of time. Yeah. Because the because the um, you know what what you might expect, for example, is you might expect to have a level where you just had the you, you know you just had basic navigation with the platforms. Right, using the using the gravity effect to navigate between the level, and then you might have in the next level might introduce um, the lava, right, and maybe the the super jumps, right, and then the next level might in, might introduce the switches. So you've got kind of you, it feels like you've got enough material to justify many more stages than you actually have, and they've obviously not had the time, like you said, they kind of. They either felt that they wanted to deliver it all in a single level, or they've run out of time to, to do that. Um, but yeah, it, it kind of feels like a like there's yeah, so, like you said, yeah, there's certainly cool. enough content here that they could have actually sort of yeah, stretched yeah. out how yeah. how much they introduce. In it's kind of it's kind of a backhanded compliment. It, it really, is, yeah. Right? I'm kind of I, I like the fact they've got the content, and I'm just sort of uh, I'm saying, well, given that you went to all of this effort to build up all of these mechanics, right? Wouldn't it have been nice just to just to spend that little bit extra effort to kind of demonstrate them properly in a in a series of levels rather than putting them all well, into a single level? But I'm, I'm going to go but, back yeah. against I, I'm going to go back against what I've just said and sort of say one of the things I've emphasised in some of the lab sessions is you know if you're putting together a portfolio for your website and things like that, a lot of people are only going to look at it for maybe two minutes. So actually, yeah, that's true. jamming that's all true. of the content in the first two minutes isn't always a bad thing. That's true. Um, so okay, well we we, we kind of uh, we've been back and forth on this a little bit, but I mean in terms of the mechanics themselves, there um, we said there's there's clearly a, a, a wide set of compl complementary mechanics, um, and I do think they fit together well. That why well, I was I was kind of thinking of it from a kind of um, you know depth and complexity point of view, where um, I suppose I suppose what I'm going what I'm going for is they've got they've they've got lots of mechanics in here. Which automatically gives them some depth, yes. but by combining them in more interesting ways, they could have got extra depth for free. Yeah, right? I think it's that's kind of. I think that's what I'm trying to say. Like this super jump, um, for example, where it's just you know, like yeah, like it's only yeah. introduced at the end of the level, and it's only yeah. introduced so you can exit the level. Like it yeah. would be so nice if there was like a level where yeah. they they were scattered across, and you had to use it to make yeah. the next jump and so on and so. On. But yeah, I. Like you yeah. say, it's kind of, it's, of you know, it's 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 you know, it's kind of like um, uh, it's kind of like in, you know, is, is if you were if you were given a whole range of weapons to use, but only giving like silly little targets to shoot at. It's like you know, you've got you've got all these facilities at your disposal, um, and and no opportunities to kind of use them properly. But that said, I think they do all fit together, and they do they do all work coherently. So. Um, uh, we're, we're being very nitpicky because I still think there's a wide set of complementary mechanics, which I still think is the excellent level. Yeah, um, and, and no bugs, I don't think. Not that I've seen, no. And there is, like, like we've just said, like a reasonable amount yeah, of, like, a good amount complexity. of complexity. Like, particularly in things like you know the gravity switching and yeah. things like that. So if we go on to level design, so this is about goals, risks, and rewards, and the pacing. So um, picking, collecting the screws, that clearly gives you a kind of uh, a goal, risk, reward tension going on so here for example you know are you going to try and get down to the bottom because you've got to you've got to do a difficult jump and if you want to get the screw you've got to do the difficult jump again um so i think they kind of they've clearly got that 
Yeah. And that kind of works. Um, not sure if there's uh, other places where it kind of occurs. Mm, not especially, I don't think. Do you need to do anything to get back to that? I think I could just, uh, you know, I could just get to it from here. I was going to say, uh, you know, I like wonder a, where clever you have to or, a clever or experienced player would collect the super jump, come back here, come and back. Get it, yeah, and yeah, go. that's what, but, that's what I wanted. But but no, not really. You can just do it. Okay. There. So it's just that one place, really. Um, so again, I think it comes back to that comment about, well, how much of this, uh, how much space have they given themselves to demonstrate the game? Um, but uh, good would be a clear and coherent set of goals, risks, and rewards. Yeah, um, definitely think, there, at least. I, I think it's there. Um, and then in terms of pacing... So we, so we start off with like you know almost like the... the uh, yeah. Uh, what's the word? Archetypal sort of like Mario, like you have to yeah, introduce it. You can jump, and then you have to yeah, jump again, right. and then oop, yeah. there's, there's a little platform. And then yeah. we start introducing lava and other... So... Again, the pacing is, I would say, quite compressed. They're introducing a lot in a very short yeah. space, but I can see why they've but it, done that. But it is there, yeah. But there is definitely pacing. I, so, in terms of like tutorial level design and pacing, how do you feel about this section? Yeah. This, they, so they I, introduce both lava and jump pads in a yeah in a very uh, impactful time. way, um, but yeah. they do it by killing you. However, you do yeah. restart right away here. Right away. Yeah, no, I, I, it's it's an odd choice, and and again, I think it's due to this compression. That's a good word to describe what they've done here. Um, you know, it's a lot of game compressed into a small amount of space. So I think so just... it, it feels like it starts small, then it opens up into this wider landscape, um, and that's probably this is the first sort of difficult bit that you're introduced to, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so I mean, I think it does have pacing. Uh, good would be tension rises over time in a coherent pattern. I think it definitely does. Kind of, kind of fits there, I think. Um, tutorial. So the so, integrated like controls and stuff are really quite good, I think. Yes, I agree. I think and and the the little little graphical feedback thing okay. showing you what you're doing. It's also very nice. Little animations around them as well. Yeah. They've they've taken a lot of care to try and. Sh They've tried to not only put the tutorial in the game, but to allow you to interact with the tutorial elements and show that interaction. Like you said, by you know, going left and right, and then that dismisses the left and right buttons. It, like when you collect the cogs at the end. And like you were saying, even, even the dynamic yeah. camera and things like moving and moving yes. to show those cogs and the exit and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. And like the little like actual sort of, uh, what, do you, what would you call it, diegetic Sort of signs yes, that are... little signs. Yeah, so it's, I, I like all of that stuff. I think I think it's done really well. So excellent would be a gradual explanation of gameplay and controls, fully aligned with play, and sometimes communicated through level design. And I think it's. Um, I so think they probably. This is, this is certainly an example of it being. So that's the. So going back to this, I don't mind this. And again, I think it's them sort of like trying to hit that bullet point of look, we're doing yeah. it through the design of the level. I think. I think the problem I have with it is that. The very first time I played it, I guessed what would happen. Right? right. So I was like, "You want me to die at this point, right?" So you know, so you're, and it, that felt odd, right? So I sort of thought I knew what would happen, and it still felt like it wanted me to kill myself. Yeah, and I think in a, um, I guess you know, if we're going to draw parallels to a game like sort of Super Meat Boy or something, where it's just like very quick, very platformery, very sort of rapid um, iterations, it's like okay, if I if I die yeah. and come back, it's not the end of the world. So I don't think it's. Yeah. I think maybe there like there could have been better ways to introduce those things, but I think I can see what they were going for, and I think it I think it works in this context. Yeah. So core dynamic. Um, so uh, just looking at their their. What they handed in, um, they said spatial reasoning. So, yep, good. <laughs> um, finding the safest route through the map, working out how to use the environment to your advantage, and collecting gears to super jump. Our game also adds risk and reward, allowing the player to risk to collect rewarding bolts. Um, yeah, so all of that works works fine, I think. Um, and the the collection, so it does have that collection dynamic, but it is in service to the puzzle. Yeah, absolutely. Um, You're collecting so I think, stuff. Uh, not yeah. out of the joy of collecting the things, but as yeah. a as a means of showing your mastery over the space in a way. So um, excellent would be a clear core dynamic that is supported by an integrated set of mechanics. 
And it does feel like we're there, doesn't it? Yep. Um, yeah, yeah, very you, nice. Yeah, just going back to the mechanics for a second, I totally forgot or overlooked that they have buttons as well. Yeah, like, yeah. It's, I mean, it's there, too. but it's for no reason. It just opens it, the door. Yeah, yeah. It's just this is what I mean. I like so the button. So in fact, this entire last part of the level, right? The buttons and the super jump, and you don't need them, right? They've imp it's like I said, they've implemented a set of mechanics for the next level, and they're not written the next level. And of course, that may be what happened. And right? actually, yeah, I was <laughs> realizing as you said that, it's like, oh, actually, that makes sense. Oh, um, see, even so, though I know that thing is there, it still kills me every time, and it's <laughs> always in slow motion as well, yeah. which is good for a first-time player because you know they get a sense of, oh, okay, I see what's happening yeah. here. Um, so this but, is this is this is kind of relevant because this is the first be that bit of feedback, which was to say, are people aware of what that middle line is doing? Um, so they tried to add a lot of changes to make it super clear. So they added a sign on the field generator, which introduces you to the concept, added a particle effect between the fields to show the different areas, and added an arrow animation when the player crosses the border to show the switch in gravity the first time. Right? Um, so that's the, that's the little circle thing that appears on you when you first come across it. I don't think it happens. It doesn't happen again. Oh, no, it oh, it does. oh, it does happen. Yeah, it does it happen. Honestly, again. hadn't registered that that was happening, but it's but a it, nice but little it, touch. It, it registers on the first time because they slow down time. Yeah. To to, to sort of show you. Um, so yes, so I think all of that does work. It's just that the level design of that bit doesn't quite work, right? But but all of the things they added do, do, do work. Um, they also said to play test the slow mode. So they originally had it so the camera would change during the initial fall into the lava, but after having people playtest it, they thought it was jarring, so we decided to remove this element. They had kept the slow mode, though, as it, they thought it helped the player understand what was happening for the first time. I'm not sure I understand what they've no, said I, there. So, they so did they so, decide to remove it or not? <laughs> so I think they removed it from when you fall into the lava. Oh, so it would happen every time yeah. you died. Yeah, so they so kept it like for the first bit to introduce it. Yeah, but and then that, for the next. That seems like a reasonable change, then. Yeah, like I say, I can yeah. see why they keep it the first time. It's a bit obnoxious when I keep falling into it, but for a first time uh, player, it's useful to yeah. understand. Okay, they that's said what's um, they were also told to add a puzzle to the ceiling to help demonstrate the concept to the player. So that allows, shows them the game works with the same mechanics, whether the gravity is switched or not. So, uh, yeah, I think that was really important that they did that, actually. Yeah, I think in one of the early sort of prototypes of it that they had in the lab, it was, yeah, they, I mean, obviously, it was an early stage, but all of the puzzles were on sort of this, the orange Bottom side, bit. rather than the blue side. Right, right, yeah. Yeah, so that makes, yes, so so, so it doesn't have a purpose, but now it does. Um, they The jumping felt too floaty for a robot, so they tweaked it, so that sounds like sort of playtester stuff, and that seems to have worked. And the game lacks risk and reward, so that's where they added the screws to differentiate good, to, good and great players. Um, and some screws are in hard to get places, and when you die, you lose a screw. Um, yeah, so, I think that's yeah. a good way. Like particularly the, yeah. the the losing a screw on death really emphasises that element of yes. risk. It's not just oh, this is a harder jump. It's that it's a harder yeah, yeah. jump, and you're going to lose a screw. Like yeah. you might lose two screws to get one. Yeah. So excellent would be that feedback has been interpreted and addressed and the changes have been successful. Um, and I kind of feel that it has. Yeah, I think so. I don't know where we are. Um, yeah, so another really nice example, and I, and I know we complained a bit about the size of it, but I think it's worth saying again, we're, we're not expecting massive games, so it's not that the size is a problem. The problem is that the complexity of the mechanics are not appropriate for the size that it is, right? Um, although I do accept what you said, Tom, about actually sometimes having the need to, to demonstrate a lot in a small amount of space. But um, yeah, I, I, I think that I think that that explanation of they, they they ran out of time to do a second level and put the stuff at the end that feels quite 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 plausible to me. Um, All right. Yeah, but yeah, nice nice game. So really nice game. Yeah, that brings us to the end of uh, of this batch of games. So stay tuned, and we will see you again for another video yeah. very, very soon. See you soon.